Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to Breakup Recovery Podcast. I'm Barbara Stevens and I'm a Breakup Recovery Mentor. In this episode, I have with me Kevin Carlson. So welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Barbara. So Kevin, tell me a little bit about yourself. I am an expert in divorce uh, litigation and recovery in uh, Dallas, Texas. I was trained as a psychologist first and then as a lawyer. And for the last 30 years, I've worked as a consultant to boutique family law firms in Texas and around the country, helping people navigate their way through divorce. So tell me, what does the recovery bit mean? What I'm finding is, as I'm sure you found too, is that recovery involves both uh, emotional, legal, financial, and even some physical changes and adaptations to the new circumstance that people find themselves in after divorce. And a lot of people just have a big challenge in trying to navigate their way through all that at the same time. So do you help people navigate their way through divorce? I do. So how do you do that, Kevin? Um, Normally, I'm employed by lawyers early in the divorce litigation process. Lawyers call me when they have clients who are having difficulty just dealing with the the litigation process, with the emotional roller coaster that divorce includes, with uh, dealing with their spouses about managing children or visitation or exchanges of visitation. And so I come in as a coach to help them get ready for their various litigation appearances, hearings, or depositions, and then to help them kind of deal with the emotional uh, roller coaster that's that's required if you're going to successfully get through a divorce. So what tips would you give people who are on that emotional roller coaster after their divorce or during their divorce? Well, during the divorce, it's really difficult, and, and most people... The goal is just to keep your head above water emotionally and to and to learn the tools that you need in order to perform successfully as a participant in a legal system. Most of my clients have never been in court before. They've never had their depositions taken. They've never had to testify. And so I teach them the tools they need in order to function effectively in the courtroom and to deal with lawyers in those uh, litigation situations. And then outside the outside the courtroom, then it's mostly about helping them you know, cope with stress, plan their life both during and after divorce, deal with their children, and keep themselves emotionally and physically healthy while they're going through this incredibly stressful time. That's a lot of things that they have to think about, isn't it, as well as their divorce? Oh, it's, it's overwhelming. I mean, most people you know, have several episodes just being completely overwhelmed by how much they have to do and how little they know about how to do it. So, it's, yeah, it's very difficult. So when you see somebody who is overwhelmed, well, what is the first tip or what is the first way you go about helping them? Primarily stay focused on the present. Many people make the situation more difficult or even more overwhelming by trying to focus on the next 55 steps that are going to, going to occur or to uh, contemplate all the various possibilities about how the litigation could turn out or how the divorce could turn out, um, all the bad things that could happen. And so I, I really get people to focus on, you know, what is it you need to do today in order to get through today? And if that's, you know, go do your deposition, go do it. If it's get your kid to school, get him to school. If it's, you know, fill out the paperwork for your lawyer, then fill it out. But to just focus on one thing at a time and not think too far ahead. Staying focused on just living in the present and, and finding something positive to focus on every day is really important. I think we can all get caught up in what could happen, what might happen, what should happen, what we want to happen. So that can take over our lives, can't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, you know, what could happen, what should happen is really uh, very bad for your mental health and for people's positive outlook. And it makes it much harder to get through the process if you're focused on this shouldn't be happening to me. Um, So it's kind of, you have to stay focused on what's the current reality and what can I do to make it better. 
And I guess you have to tell people this more than once because we can still get caught up in those sort of thought process all the way through a divorce proceeding. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I probably tell that those kinds of things to my clients, you know, 25 to 50 times during the time that they're going through the, their divorces because every time there's a crisis, it's easy to take a couple of steps backward and forget the new tools that you've been acquiring. And so you need constant reminders. It's, it's just like, just like being coached to learn a new skill. You need to have people remind you what it is you need to do. So do you work with people all the way through their divorce proceeding and then after? Yes. So what work do you do with people after their divorce is finalised? You know, the, after divorce then, it's sort of the time for people to, you know, stop and sort of take a new uh, look at where are they now? What is it they want to do with their lives? Because, well, most people see divorce as a completely negative experience. My perspective is, is that divorce gives you the opportunity to rebuild your life from kind of the ground up if you are wise enough to take advantage of that. And so I encourage people to kind of stop and, you know, reassess, you know, what is it they're good at? What is it they think they're supposed to be doing while they're here on the earth? Uh, what have they learned from their experiences in their relationship that has made them a better, different person? And what would they like to do with the rest of their life? Because for most uh, people, both men and women, you know, they're pretty much on their own. And so they have the opportunity to kind of start over if they have the kind of the positive mental outlook that's required to do the planning and get a new plan and execute. That's a great way to look at post-divorce, an opportunity to rebuild the life that they want. So what steps do you take people through to actually do that or to get to that, that positive place that they know that their life is in their control and it can be a happy place and it can be fulfilling and they can do the things that they want? You know, one of the one of the things I teach people both during the divorce litigation process and and I reinforce again after their divorce is final is Marty Seligman has been talking for a few years now about the benefits of gratitude and and the research is really interesting in that people who make a list of the three things they're grateful for every day for a week are basically inoculated against depression and anxiety six weeks later. And, and so I really teach people the importance of waking up every day, you know, doing a gratitude list either on paper or in their heads and using that as the basis for starting their day with, kind of with a positive outlook. That in itself is a, probably the most powerful tool that people can acquire that will help them change their attitude and make them a more productive problem solver, uh, both during and after divorce. And the, the tools for, you know, kind of life planning are the, pretty much the same as people teach in, in you know, all these um, seminars uh, around the country, around the world, which is, you know, you need to understand your own personal values. You need to, you know, have a purpose for your life that you can articulate in a sentence or two. Um, you need to have a good understanding of what your strengths are so that you can focus on what you're good at and do more of that. And then, you know, focus on your relationships. Um, you know, the people who do best going through divorce are the people with a good so social support system. And for most people going through divorce, you know, half of their support system disappears when they divorce. And so it's important to reestablish the connections with the people who care about you and to, and to find new uh, relationships to uh, take the place of those that you lost as a result of the divorce. And, and those kind of four areas are the things that will... Um, let people build a foundation that they can start over on. Oh, definitely. I talk a lot about gratitude and I think we can get caught up with our gratitude list and doing just material possessions. So I talk a lot about there are other things in life to be grateful for that aren't necessarily the house that they live in, the car that they drive or, you know, the boat that they might have or want. So right. what would be some of the normal things that people put on their gratitude list? The thing I hear most from people is they're, in divorcing people especially, is their children. You know, they're always grateful for uh, their kids, for their kids' achievements, for uh, their kids' ability to kind of tough it out through the divorce, the uncertainties and the conflict. The relationships with family is almost always next. You know, most people have... Uh, supportive families who are there for them when they go, are going through the divorce and the people who, friends and family who step up, become even more valuable. 
post-divorce than they probably were during and after, or dur before and during. And, and then, so for some people, it's work. You know, men especially get more kind of their uh, self-worth and definition from their work. And for some of them, you know, the fact that they can continue to work or that their friends at work are, have been supportive during their divorce is, is very meaningful to them and is a real source of satisfaction and support. Do you find that people find it difficult to acknowledge or, or talk about the things that they're good at? Oh, yes. How do you get around that? You know, one of the things that I do is that because I have a chance to establish pretty good relationships with the folks I work with and to spend a fair amount of time getting them to tell me their stories, I, I just make mental notes of the things I hear where they've been successful or where people around them are obviously giving fe them feedback that they're good at something or other. And I use that, the, the things that I hear from them then to kind of help b them build their own list of, you know, here's the things that are that are good ideas for you to focus on in terms of these are your personal strengths. I've also started using the Gallup folks have published the Strength Finders tool. It's, you know, it's like 20 minutes worth and um, on, available online and it gives you a list of your top five strengths. I've used that a lot with people now um, because it's, you know, it's $20 or something like that online and it's really available. And so people can, you know, take 20 minutes and come out with a list of, oh, these are the things I'm good at. And it's not always, it's not always things that people, you know, would seize on as being strengths. And so it's, it's very helpful in kind of starting a new conversation about, oh, okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm good at relating to people, or I'm a good strategic thinker, or I'm a good at helping people develop their talents and skills, or, or whatever their strengths might be, is a way of getting them focused on their own internal personal strengths and away from um, the traumas of their divorce. And I guess in some ways it helps build their self-confidence again. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, interestingly enough, I think women tend to bounce back a little bit more quickly in that area because usually their social networks are better and they have more friends and they have more you know, women around them saying, you know, uh, positive things about them. And men tend to be more isolated and, and not have the kind of friendships where people will say, hey, dude, you're, you know, buck up, you're good at blah, blah, blah. Mm. And, and, so, um, and so I think the women tend to bounce back in that way uh, a little bit quicker than men do. Kevin, do you work with men as well as women? Oh, absolutely. Just like counseling, for counseling, men don't seek help as much as, as often as women do. And, and it's unfortunate because if you look at the long-term consequences for, for men's health post-divorce, and especially for men who are in their 50s and 60s, being alone is a serious health risk. And so men who have the, don't have the ability to surround themselves with a support network are the guys who go out and get remarried in a year or two, and then you know 90% of those relationships fail, and so then they're you know in their late 50s or early 60s and single again after having suffered another divorce, and so it really becomes a snowball. Women are a little bit more likely to take a step back and say, you know, I'm not going to do that again. In part, that's because there's they have a support system of women who say, you know, I'm not, we're not letting you do that. You know, okay, he's cute, but no. No, you're not doing that. So I think women are, are a little bit more successful in the, in the long run, especially in mid to late life at recovering from, from divorce trauma than men. You know, men are wimps. We, we don't do well alone. And so we make stupid you know, mistakes in relationships that just make it worse. What do you think are the main reasons why a man will get into another relationship and it fails? Is it because that they don't do enough work after the first relationship ends? Yes, you know the the research is pretty clear. Ninety percent of men. Uh, this is this is the Mavis Hetherington research from what the early eighties. Ninety percent of men are emotionally unchanged ten years after their divorce. I mean, they don't learn anything. We just don't learn anything. So, you know, if, if you don't learn anything and you haven't learned anything after ten years, then you no, know, you're going to make the you know recreate your bad relationship again in your next one. So, yeah, it's. Uh, it's disappointing, but it's just how it is. Do you think their egos get in the way of them learning? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's I, I don't need any help. There's nothing wrong with me. This wasn't my fault. And so, 
yeah, it's it's you have to be willing to accept responsibility for at least half of the relationship failure if you're going to learn to do it different. And men are not good at that. Kevin, where can people find you or get in contact with you? I'm available on the web. Uh, DrKevinCarlson.com is uh, my website, and there are some resources available there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook and have, within the last few months, have been more active on Facebook. I am fairly active on Twitter. Usually the things I'm posting on Twitter are divorce-related or leadership-related, so um, I'm out there on social media. Kevin, thank you for taking the time today to talk about your work, um, the way you help people through their divorce and post-divorce. I think you've given us some great tips and some ideas and strategies that people can put in place when they're actually going through their divorce. So thank you once again for coming on to Break Up Recovery Podcast. Thank you, Barbara, for the invitation. Really enjoyed talking to you. If you feel that you are still struggling with your breakup, if you are experiencing intense feelings of anger, resentment and bitterness, and it is taking over your life, I'm here to help you in this area of moving on and coping after your breakup. I work with my clients one-on-one -on -one through my mentoring program. If you want to learn more about how we can work together, contact me via email or my Facebook page, Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor, and book in for my free 30-minute sounding board session and we can set up a time that suits. In this free session, you will walk away with clarity about your situation, strategies and tools to start building the future you deserve. So together, we can start your journey of recovery. All my information is on my website, www.barbarastevens.com.au. If you don't want to miss an episode of Breakup Recovery Podcast, subscribe on iTunes and I would appreciate it if you could take the time to write a review and rate the podcast. Also feel free to message me with any questions that you have about Breakup Recovery Podcasts or subjects that you want me to cover in future podcast episodes by clicking on the contact button of my website or my Facebook page. I'm always looking for ways to help you recover from your breakup. And the last thing I'd like to say is, be gentle on yourself. You deserve happiness. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbastevens.com.au.